Hello and welcome to Craft with Sarah. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can turn a flat Zentangle image like this unicorn into one that's layered. So this design now is five separate layers which I can cut out from cardstock and then stick together with 3D foam pads to make a wonderful layered project. Best of all, all this can be done from within Design Space and it's really, really simple. It uses a magical tool called the Contour button to create this effect. Let's find out how to do it. When I'm working on a design that I know is going to have a lot of contouring in, so I'm going to use the Contour tool lots to create the different layers, I like to make sure that I'm working on the classic version of Design Space. So Design Space has two separate versions. It's got a new one and a classic one. And the new one as of February 2021 is very new. And as such, it can be a little bit buggy. So if you're having problems with Design Space working, then switching to the classic version can fix those problems for you. And I find that the classic version works much better with the contour tool than the new one. So if you want to switch yours over, like I have, click the three little lines in the top left of the screen next to where it says Canvas. From there, look down to where it says Settings and click on that and you'll get this pop-up. Underneath where it says Canvas Style, click on the little circle that says Classic and that will switch your design space over to use the classic version. If you want to switch back, you can just do those same steps and then press new and that will switch you back to the new one. But I'm going to keep it on classic as like I said, I think it works better for the type of project we're about to make. The first thing we want to do is to choose the Zentangle image that we're going to turn into a layered design. I'm going to use one of the images from within Cricut Access, but if you don't have access, then there are loads of places online to find Zentangle SVGs and a lot of places you can actually find them for free. For example, if you go to designbundles.com and have a look in their free section, there's normally a couple of Zentangle style designs in there to choose from. I'll put a link to that page in the description of this video so that you can have a look. But I'm going to choose one from Access, so I'm going to go into Images on the left. Design Space has a way of categorizing images called image sets and that's what we're going to need for this one so that we can easily look through all of the Zentangle designs available to choose the one that we want to use for this project. So when you're on this screen, click on the very top left where it says all images next to the word category. This will take you back to this screen and now if you look under highlighted categories, there's a link called image sets. Click on that. This shows you all of the different image sets within Design Space with the very newest images at the top. But we're going to do a search for a particular image set. So in the search box, type in Zentangle and then press the search button. The one we want is called Favorite Zentangle Collection. So click on that and it will show you all of these lovely Zentangle designs. And most of these ones would make beautiful layered designs because you've got nice thick lines so when you cut out that top layer from cardstock it shouldn't tear, it should cut out nicely and it's got all of these lovely shapes inside like the flowers and the swirls that we can fill in with different colours to create our layered design. So have a little look through and choose the one which you want to use for your project. I'm going to choose this unicorn so I've clicked on it and then I'm going to press insert images. So here's my unicorn and I'm just going to drag it a bit bigger so that it'll be easier to work with. When I'm doing layered designs, the thing I like to do first is the very bottom layer because it's the easiest one to do. So to make the bottom layer, right click on your design and press duplicate. To make it easier, I'm going to move these to the side. Now you want to click on the bottom layer, so your original one, and you know it's the bottom layer because it shows as the bottom one in the layers panel. Change the colour so it's something different. It doesn't matter too much what you choose at this point because you can always change the colour later. But now that you've changed the colour, go into the contour tool down the bottom of the layers panel and click on it. And then when that's popped up, it might take a little while to load, but once it's loaded, press the Hide All Contours button and then close out of that window. And that's filled in all of those shapes. So now that will be my very bottom layer because the bottom layer should always have everything filled in. And if I drag this back over, you can see already we've made a two-layer design. 
but we can do better than two layers. Let's add another one. I'm going to right click on my top layer and press duplicate again. I'm going to keep my top layer as black, so the one underneath it I'm going to change the colour of. Let's go for green. It's easiest to work on this when all your layers are aligned, so to do that drag a box around all of them and then go into align and then centre. And that's going to perfectly position your layers one on top of the other. Now you'll notice that we can't see the green one anymore. That's okay, it's because at the moment the green layer is exactly the same as the black layer, so we can't see it now that that black layer is on top. I'm going to drag this over to the left of the screen and make it a little bit smaller. And the reason for that is it will make it easier to contour the green layer. So in your layers panel, press your middle layer, so the one that you can't see at the moment, mine's the green one, and then go into the contour tool again. Wait for it to load and then you might need to zoom out with the little buttons on the bottom so that you can see the whole thing. Now you can start clicking inside some of these shapes and as you click them, that's going to fill in those sections with your colour. So you can see on my design that I've got peeking through underneath that the petals of that flower are now going to be green. And that's the reason that I like dragging the layer over to the left hand side so that we've got a little preview of what we're doing as we're clicking into the different contour bits. So I'm going to go through a few of these and start filling them in with green. It can take a little bit of practice to know which shapes will look good filled in with colours on which layer, but the more you do, the easier you'll start to find that. Now sometimes when you're clicking, you'll find it hard to select one of the shapes, so if when you click it's not getting that black outline, just move your mouse around until it goes black and then as soon as the outline on that piece turns black in the contour pop-up, click it and it will take that shape out. So I'm just doing a few of these to make them green. I think I want to do some in the head as well. This one's a little bit trickier because I can't see my preview of the head underneath so it's a little bit harder to know what I'm doing. But the good thing is, if you don't like the changes you've made, you can just press contour again once you've come out of it and change them. So I'll show you that. So I'm going to close the contour now. And that showed me my design. But let's say I actually want to fill in another bit of green. I can just press contour again and then wait for it to load and continue making changes. Let's add another layer. This time I want to duplicate my green layer. So to do that, in the Layers panel, I've got my green one selected, then I'm going to press Duplicate at the top. That's going to put the layer on the very top, on top of that black one. And actually, I want it one underneath, so I'm going to drag it behind that black outline and change the colour. Like we did before, I want to select everything by drawing a box around it. Or another way you can do it is you can go Select All in the menu at the top, and then go align and center. You'll see that all of my green has turned to pink because my green and pink layers are exactly the same at the moment. And actually I just realized I made a little mistake because I actually want my pink layer underneath the green one. So I'm gonna drag that underneath. So you see in my layers panel, it's now going black, green, pink, blue. I've clicked on my pink layer and now I can go into contour and start clicking into some more of these shapes. And this time it's going to fill them in with pink. So let's have a think about what I would like to be pink. So I've clicked into a load of those shapes now and when I close it out, you can see I've now got all of those pink bits coming through too. So we've now got a four layer design and if I just pull the layers apart, you'll see how it's starting to look. So I'm just dragging these apart to show you what it looks like. So the blue one at the bottom is our base layer and that has all of the gaps completely filled in. The next one 
is the pink one and you see most of those gaps are filled in but there's a few still there which are going to show the blue through. Next is the green one and that has some more of the gaps showing but it's still got a few pieces filled in green. So you see that's going to show through some blue and some pink. And finally, the top layer in black has all of the spaces open and empty. So you can see all of the colours behind it. I'm very nearly finished with this unicorn, but I think I want to fill in the mane in a different colour. I think a nice yellow mane would look really nice. And also I'm going to do the horn sections in yellow too. I want my yellow to be one of the top layers so I want that to appear just below the black layer because the mane if you think about it on a unicorn or a horse the mane would kind of be sitting on top of the body so to do that I'm going to need to duplicate my black layer so I'll click on it in the layers panel and then press duplicate let's make it a yellow color and then I'm going to drag it underneath the black layer in the layers panel and um, then move it into position, or that would be better if I went select all and then align center. So I know everything is perfectly aligned. And then I'm going to click my yellow layer and go into contour. And then I'm just going to click into all of these main shapes. Oh, you see this one's being a bit fiddly. It keeps selecting the wrong bits. This is where you need to persevere <laughs> so it can help to zoom in. You see I've got my mouse over this line here but it's not selecting it, it's not getting that dark outline. It's just a kind of knack of getting your mouse in the right point but if you really can't find it, like I'm struggling on this piece that's left in the main, what you can do instead is look down the list on the right hand side and when you find the shape that you're trying to hide just click on it in there and it'll fill it in. Let's just do this top of the mane and the horn and then close out of that contour window and there you have it. Let's zoom in a bit to see. Now that I've done all of my layers I want to group them together so that I can resize this to the size I want to cut it out and all of the layers will change in proportion. To do that press select all again and then at the top of the layers panel press the group button and now all your layers are grouped so as you resize them they'll all change together and that makes it much easier to make sure everything's going to line up perfectly when you cut it out. A good practice to get into before you cut it though is just to have a little check of all of those layers to make sure you're not unnecessarily cutting out any pieces that you don't need to. So I'm going to ungroup my layers again by pressing ungroup and then zoom out a bit and drag them all apart. I'm trying to keep them in order so I've got my top one on the bottom right and then I'll just keep going down. So here are my five layers. Now this, what I've done here, is a prime example of having things that I could fix to make it easier for my Cricut to cut out. Can you see what it is? It's the mane. So this is my second layer from the top, this yellow one, and I filled in the mane and the horn. But on my green and my pink layers, the mane is still being cut out. And that's kind of a waste if you think about it, because my Cricut's going to do all that work of cutting out the mane shapes, but then I'm going to cover it up with a solid colour. So really, there's no point in having the mane cut out on my green and pink layers. So I'm just going to click into them and remove the mane and the horn on both of those. And this is one reason why splitting out your layers before you cut them is a good idea. It does help you to spot anything which you could tidy up to make it a bit neater. So now I'm just going to do the same thing on the pink layer. Now that's done, I'm going to put the layers back on one at a time just to make sure I'm still happy. I'm not worrying about lining them up perfectly at this point because... I'll fix that at the end. Right now I'm just having a look at all the shapes just to confirm that I'm happy with the layering and how it's all looking and the colours that are coming through 
And now that I fix that mane and the horn, I think I'm good to go. So I can click select all and then go into align and center because I've moved everything about. So I want to get it perfectly positioned again. And now with all of those layers selected, go ahead and press group. And now you can resize this. So let's say I wanted to make it seven inches tall. And we'll zoom in. And here we go, my five layer unicorn is now ready to cut out. So I hope you've enjoyed this video on how to turn a flat Zentangle image in design space into a layered design that you can cut out from cardstock. This really was just a brief overview into the power of the contour tool and the type of layered designs that you can create straight from design space itself. If you'd like to learn more about layering, including how to make more complex layered designs or how to make shadow boxes or clocks or any kind of layering design you can think of, then you might be interested in my Lovely Layering training course. Lovely Layering is a collection of 11 lessons which teaches you how to make all kinds of layered designs from within Cricut Design Space. Lesson one takes what we've learned in this video and goes one step further. So rather than just filling in all the shapes in the Zentangle like we did here, for this stag head, what we do is we kind of do the same thing with the bottom layers, but then we actually go into that top layer. So for example, on the unicorn, it would be the black one. And we actually cut things out of it using the shapes tool and the slice tool so that we can make more realistic layers. For example, with this stag, if you think about it, if you had a stag looking at you, the antlers are going to be the furthest point away from you. So you'd want those to be lower in your layers than, say, the nose, which would be the thing which is closest to you if you're really looking at a deer. And this is all possible from straight within Design Space and Lovely Layering will show you how to do it. So for more complex, realistic Zentangle layered designs, this video is what you need to watch. Just like on the screen, you'll learn how to turn a standard one layer image into one which is full of different layers and colors that you can then cut out from cardstock and layer together to make a gorgeous layered design. Your master editing tools within Design Space such as Contour, Slice and Weld. And don't worry if you haven't used them before or if you're not quite sure how to use them because all you need is included in the video lessons inside the course. Lesson two of Lovely Layering is how to add the shadow layers to stack them so that you get more than one at a time. Lesson three uses those same techniques, but it tells you how to load them to existing um, SVGs or images. So like this one on the screen, it shows you how to do it. Lesson four is how to design your own shadow box scenes. So this is where you combine pre-made images to design your own themed shadow boxes. For example, this husky design. I'll show you some top tips for ensuring an effective 3D design that shows the layers perfectly. And then you'll also learn how you can cut it out to perfectly sit inside your box frame and how to stick it all together. Lesson five builds on that shadow box technique and this time it's how to make a layered design but inside a shape. So I'll show you how to do it with this unicorn head design. I'll also show you how to turn your design into a light up shadow box where we've got LED strips behind it. So not only is this a designing course, but every single lesson also includes information and a video on how to assemble the finished design once you've designed it. Lesson six is how to make layered greetings cards. So together we'll learn how to make this dolphin design. For lesson seven, we're going to be designing a monogram letter with stencil shapes. So you can see here, we've got the S letter with flowers and butterflies. And then first we'll design that so you could put any shapes you want inside this letter. It could be anything to match the person who you're making it for and what they like. We'll then turn this into a layered design to go inside a shadow box. Remember earlier how I said that cutting out that shadow layer using the slice tool is the first step to making your own layered mandala letters? Well, inside Lovely Layering, I'll show you how you can turn that into a six layer design like the one you can see here. So for this course, I show you how to make this floral design, but of course you can add whatever images and shapes you want to personalize your letters, however you want to make them. 
Sometimes you might have an image which you want to make layered, but actually it's all one colour and one shape and it's just a silhouette image. Don't worry if that's the case because you can still turn it into a layered design and I'll show you how. So for this tutorial we take the dog silhouette you can see and then we'll add an outline to it and add a mandala design in the middle and then in design space turn it into a four layered design all in different colours. Lesson 10 is how to design your own layered clocks and I think these are really fun and they make excellent gifts for birthdays or Christmas for your family member and friends. So I'll show you how to make this sunflower design but again you can make whatever type of clock you want. I'll also show you how to assemble the finished clock with a working mechanism once you've designed it and cut it out. Finally, we have lesson 11, and this is one of my favorites, and it's also a newer lesson. So this was something that was requested by members of the course, so I added it in um, at the end of last year. And this is how you can design word scenes, which is when you take a whole word and create an image layered design behind it, so that um, throughout each letter of the word, you see different parts of the design. So in total, these 11 videos will teach you all the skills you need to master creating layered designs with your Cricut machine. So if you're interested in learning how to make your own layered designs, check out the lovely layering course by following the link in the description of this video. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you have enjoyed this video. If you have, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my YouTube channel for loads more design space tutorials. Thank you for watching. Bye.